long before the invention of the light bulb, before electronic appliances, and before electricity was ever discovered or even thought of and had been used by the animal kingdom for millions of years adapted, enhanced, and perfected for their niches and roles in their environments. Technically, all animals use electricity to some degree. It's the very way we are even able to move or think in the first place. However, there are so many fascinating ways animals have evolved to use electricity. The flying spiders, the fish able to feel your every move. Hello, this is Wild Side of Things, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about electricity in the animal kingdom. One of my personal favorite and most interesting ways animals produce electricity is through electrosensory, or more formally, electroreception. In essence, it is an animal's ability to sense the electrical impulses within another animal's body. The organ which allows for electroreception, known as the ampullae of Lorazini, are found in many animals, including monotremes, sharks, rays, crocodilians, spinosaurids, and the Guyana dolphin. Electrosensory works best in water, and allows them to sense even the weakest electric currents. Oddly, echidnas have this sense, despite not being aquatic themselves, which leads scientists to believing that echidnas at some point had an aquatic ancestor. For many animals, such as sharks, this sense is so sensitive that sharks oftentimes bite at cables, which traverse the sea floor, causing power outages and internet speeds to halt, as they can feel the electricity running through them. you think of an animal climbing walls, what do you usually think of? Claws? Suction cups? Sticky fluids? Well, for the gecko, its main way of climbing is the use of static electricity. Geckos have hairs under their feet called setae, which generate electricity by rubbing the hairs against the surface and air particles, which in turn releases electrons which pushes against the protons of the molecules. Like what happens when you rub your socks against the carpet, the friction creates energy. This allows them to climb a myriad of surfaces, with the exception of Teflon, the stuff that's used for non-stick pots and pans. So, why does Teflon cause geckos to be unable to stick? The main reason is its chemical makeup. Essentially, Teflon, or as it's more scientifically named, PTFE, because there's no way I'm pronouncing that, is made of carpet coated in fluorine, which gives off an extremely strong negative charge. This pushes back the protons that the gecko holds in its setae, and in turn disabling its ability to stick. I'm talking about the use pretty much everyone has heard about, electricity in the use of hunting and self-defense. Many of these animals share a common name with their relatives with the added word of electric, such as electric rays or catfish. Electric eels, on the other hand, are somewhat of a misnomer. They're not really eels, but instead knife fish. These animals generate electricity using specialized cells called electrolytes, which are stuck together in such a way that allows energized particles called ions to flow through. This allows them to generate electricity used to stun prey and potential predators. The animals which use this have played important roles in the development of technology. For example, electric eels allowed scientists to study electricity and inspired the invention of the battery. All of the uses already mentioned may be easier to believe. But if I were to tell you that electricity played a role in some animals' flight, along with their daily routine, you'd probably look at me as if I had two heads. However, for spiders this is very true. Okay, they don't actually fly, rather they do what is called ballooning. Essentially, instead of walking long distances, spiders create a parachute shaped web, which is used to make them airborne. As the spider's silk leaves its body, it rubs against comb-like plates on their hind legs, and filament structures hold this charge. These same hairs allow the spider to sense electrical charges in the air, and they have been known to follow the magnetic currents which flow through the earth as they drift. These webs, electrical charge, have also been known to help in hunting, as insects such as bees and flies flap their wings so fast that they generate electricity, which in part also assists in flight as the charge gives them lift, and as a double, attracts pollen to their hairs. This electrical charge, which is generated by the insects, causes them to become attracted to the webs. 
insects can sense electricity. However, the presence of webs can distort magnetic fields, causing the insects to be incapable of sensing the webs.